everyone and welcome back to the Faith Brunel's Insights Podcast. I'm Faith Brunel and today we are here with Vivian Viola Pommel who happens to be my mum. So welcome Vivian to the podcast. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Excellent. So I'm going to hand over to you to introduce yourself to the listeners for us, please. Hello, my name is Vivian Pommel and I am the founder of Learn with Lalonio, which is an educational platform that blends education with mental well-being. And this is for preschool right the way up to age 16. Excellent. Thank you very much for appearing on the show today. And thank you for being so passionate to share about what you do. So my first question really is about you being a female founder, a black female founder in education. So what was the um, what was the catalyst? What empowered you to start Learn with Lalonia? Well, um, during the lockdown, when I couldn't offer my usual childcare services, there were parents still wanting educational resources and activities to do with their children at home. But for me, it wasn't just about providing them with any resources. I wanted resources that had positive cultural representation. And when I struggled to find this, um, I decided to start creating my own. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you for being um, thank you for being here today and speaking about that. I think that's really that's a really important perspective because it really goes back to what I found interesting about the brand, which is the mantra from Baby Steps to Brilliant. So can you talk just yes. a little bit more about that? Well, I think I believe that if you have the right start at a very early age, mm-hmm. you can reach your full potential. And I do think it really needs to start from your baby steps, because then you'll get to this the stage of going to the point of brilliance. And so we know from research that if children feel valued and represented in terms of their cultural representation, they actually achieve and attain much more. As Mariam Wright Edelman says, you can't be what you don't see. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I think that's such a powerful uh, I think that's such a powerful perspective even because it's incredible how you've turned the challenges of being a you know a female founder in terms of creating opportunities to inspire others I really I really think that the mantra is so important and so impactful and it really does resonate with my struggles as well and I, and I have no doubt that a range of other listeners will really be able to relate to that and resonate with that and I think it's great to see how you've pushed through those but um how you've pushed through boundaries and continue to break barriers and so my next question really is about the upcoming book launch of your of your next book I was aware that you wrote a book called Bettina's Poetry initially yeah, so please correct. speak to us about that and I'm aware that you're doing a sequel to that if I'm correct yes um so I'm um, the initial book was Bettina's Poetry and Bettina writes a range of poetry to get children involved in your know, rhythm and rhyme I mean know it's part of the curriculum but I think it's important for children to enjoy and have fun when they are looking at poetry so it was very much about that and we can we know from the figures and the research that not enough children are engaged in, you know, poetry. And so it was trying to capture interest in poetry from a very early age. The sequel to that was, is now Patina welcomes um, baby Joshua, her baby brother. And so that book launch is next week, Tuesday, the 29th at Sandwell Library. And um, it's an opportunity for parents and carers and children Mm -hmm. to look at the challenges around when a new sibling comes on board. And for Patina, um, you know, it brings, evokes a number of different feelings. Initially, she's just the only child. And then she's having to have her baby brother. And it's dealing with the challenges and those various emotions that Mm -hmm. comes with that. And we're hoping that the book will not just be for children, six to nine, but it's Mm -hmm. also going to be for parents and um, carers to use it as a useful tool to help children they're caring for navigate this very challenging time. Excellent, Vivian. Thank you very much. I'm just making some notes really about what you've just spoken about so I can just relay that to the listeners. Well, the upcoming book launch at Sound My Live on the 29th of October sounds amazing. I love how your experience, both your experiences, both personal and professional, have helped to shape the book's themes. I'm sure it's going to resonate with a lot of people. What a wonderful way to blend your expertise in education with your entrepreneurial vision. Now, that leads me on to, um, in terms of uh, writing books, I think I think it's really fitting for the listeners to understand that you also, um, you also have a creative side so could you talk to me about that secondary but for the first thing I'm interested as an ex Austin inspector were you able to use those kind of experiences actually to pull those through your resources and what other resources do you actually offer through L with L? 
Yes, I think it's important to share that because I believe in terms of my background, I have over 30 years experience of early years. I worked as a regulator for underage provisions with the local authority and then as an inspector for Ofsted. And um, I've actually worked in early years provisions as well. So that experience and that knowledge actually guides me when I'm creating these educational resources, which I should say are all in line with the national curriculum. Mm -hmm. and are available on our Amazon store and also on Etsy and we are in the process of creating our own website but it's this knowledge and experience that actually guides me and motivates me mm -hmm. and um, when I'm actually creating these educational resources and yes we don't just write children's stories which I've mentioned, but we also create workbooks, whether that's English, whether that's maths, and also journals as well, and jigsaw puzzles, flashcards, posters. All of these are all in line with the national curriculum, and it's for preschool right the way through to 16, where we develop study skills books, the corner method, mm -hmm. uh, matrix, um, mind maps, and as you would know, Faith, um, because I know your in area of work, interest as well, mm -hmm. and you being my daughter, of course, is that we know that when you have study skills, the right study skills, it helps you to um, achieve more academically. I Excellent. believe it increases One your achievement. Is it about 17%? Yeah, 100% Vivian, actually 100% because a study conducted by a university in America who actually said that students who actually proactively use the Cornell method, their grades increased by 17%. And that is just a testament okay. to show the importance of study skills or skills for study, the importance of those on mindset, the importance of those on confidence, but also the, the importance of those on cultural identity as well, because just yes. to kind of tabernacle there slightly, there was actually a study um, by White Bread in 2012, which really in highlights the importance of of fostering emotional development and problem solving in early education because this as i mentioned helped to emphasize how culturally relevant material helps to enhance children's engagement and self-confidence and that's why all of the resources from l with l do have a uh, do have an undertone of study skills even from the outset from a young age because we understand the importance of cultural identity now this leads that's into right. my next question and thank you for sharing that your book is available on amazon now can you talk to us about your creative side and how you maintain a life balance well right <laughs> yes i do have a creative side and this brand is called brunel's british millinery now my mum was very creative and she taught me the very skills that i now use to create these flamboyant pieces my pieces have made it to on the catwalk of london fashion week mm -hmm. um was featured in uh, many years ago in ebony magazine We've had local and national press coverage for, for my pieces. And they've been worn at weddings, church events, Royal Ascot, then which was the Queen's Garden Party and many more events. So I have got a creative side. But when you're trying to balance out, because I have a family, I'm a mm. wife also, and trying to balance that with my church commitments, you've got to strike that balance and I think if you strike that balance you can get it right but I think you really need to give some thought to striking that balance and um, the ways to do that as well is to give opportunities to other individuals mm -hmm. as well and I think um, having interns in the company actually is beneficial for both sides I think that's very important and I think um, in terms of networking which I think is a very key component to business I mean I was at a wonderful event um, last night which was you know um, celebrating and welcoming our new chancellor at a which we went to a wonderful event last night at the Grand Hotel Lenny Henry actually handed over the baton to him and it was a wonderful occasion to network now that was in the evening and and there are challenges there, you know, you've done a full day and you've then got to go to an event. But when I went to the event, it was a wonderful opportunity for networking. Mm -hmm. But what I then did was reconsidered what I had in my diary for today and try mm -hmm. to have some time out because I know that I couldn't then do a very full day again today. So it's just about managing it, but not giving mm -hmm. up on those opportunities, but just try trying to strike that balance. 
Excellent. Thank you very much for that really in-depth dive about the work-life balance, really giving key tips and strategies to actually combat that as well. And thank you for sharing a personal anecdote because it makes it all the more uh, relatable. But you but you tabernacled on something that I find very key. And it's something that we speak a lot about here on this podcast, which is the art of networking. And what advice yes. would you give to those who have a network before they're quite nervous? What advice would you give them? Well, to be honest, it's very much about coming out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, and also to seize every opportunity. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, you know, what if I'm rejected? What if the person is not very interested? But you've got to imagine that they may have their own reservations as well. So just be brave, just be bold. And what have you got to lose? If it amounts to nothing, then you've not lost anything. But that very moment that you take could just be that Um, tipping point that you were looking for the opportunity that you were waiting for I mean yesterday when I was leaving the Grand Hotel I was um, standing next to someone we were there was a very long queue um, and I was waiting for my coat to hand in my ticket to get my coat and I thought you know what let me just seize this opportunity and have a conversation with the person next to me and that proved to be a very useful contact and now we're looking at collaborating and so you know that's very important to actually seize every opportunity so thank you, Vivian, so much for sharing about the work-life balance and really sharing personal anecdotes because it makes it more relatable. Thank you for talking about the event that you that you did, that you attended yesterday. Thank you for speaking about the importance of networking. I myself also network, and it's something that I always encourage students to do and young people and, and all professionals of, of all ilks, of all ages, that networking is key. Going back to, to what Vivian was speaking about, I think it's also good to step out of your comfort zone because you never know unless you try. And so really on the subject of celebrating milestones and looking forward, what's next for L with L? Right, in terms of what's next for Learn with the Lonyo, well, I am looking to work uh, in collaboration even more, develop more partnerships, um, take up more speaking engagements. I love the opportunity of when I was invited to speak to um, a number of women on International Women's Day and I could share with them why I wrote and created the journals with titles mm-hmm. such as Destined to Succeed. I will write my own field stop you will not define me. So, you know, those are opportunities that I feel if I can inspire other women um, Mm -hmm. to overcome those challenges and set up their own businesses, then yes, I will do that. And I think there are so many opportunities that we can gain from partnering up with other organisations. But I think developing our product range Mm -hmm. is something that I'm looking forward to. Thank you very much, Vivian, for speaking about what's next for Learn with Lalonia, for giving us an insight and a window into what you're doing as well. I think it's very interesting. And clearly today we've spoken about some very important topics ranging from a work-life balance to networking to speaking about your creative side to speaking about your um, your educational side and really just tabernacling on, on how you want to benefit and encourage as many children young people and indeed their parents as well to carry on despite challenges so I just wanted to just speak about the John Lewis experience it's something that I saw on your Instagram obviously I was there but for those who um, weren't privy to that can you speak about your John Lewis experience which you were able to partake in with for both um, for both brands Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. When you're completing your education, and for example, when I was completing my BA in education and my master's in education, you've got an idea of the type of work that you might end up doing. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, sometimes it's not the traditional route that you go down. For me, it was an opportunity that meant I could work for myself Mm -hmm. and so and create my own educational resources and establish my own business. And so when I had the opportunity to have a puppet shop at John Lewis, I wasn't quite sure what the response would be, but it was an opportunity that I embraced. And when I went to John Lewis and saw the response to not only my educational resources, but also my Brunel's millinery to the point where customers were absolutely delighted with the range and bought the products and to the point where John Lewis referred me to their buying team. I had to say that it was excellent. And so even if we're unsure about a situation, it's always good to just embrace it and just see what opportunities comes from that. 
Excellent. Thank you very much for speaking so candidly about that and for sharing such a milestone. Congratulations in that achievement. It really goes to show and to demonstrate the, the positive impact that, that, that El Widal had on that particular community and indeed the positive impact that El Widal continues to have. So just finally, really, just before we conclude today's episode, I just want you to kind of understand a bit more about your focus on women. I know that you were asked to um, create some books for International Women's Day this year and I'm quite interested because women actually only hold 27% of CEO roles globally according to a study conducted by a catalyst in 2020 so I am interested in what was and, and how um, how you created such empowering titles such as um, you will not define me and I will not be silenced yes I think for me it was looking back at my own personal journey having gone through the education system myself and that system not really getting the best out of me because the creative side of me didn't really come out at school. I didn't write poetry at school. I didn't create anything creative. Into it. We're using fabrics at school, mm -hmm. the materials, which I do now in my um, bespoke um, hats and accessories. And so for me, even when I was employed and uh, I needed a career break, I asked if I could have a career break. The answer was no, because we need you. Even although I had carpal tunnel syndrome and I couldn't hold my, my baby that I just had, which was you, of course, Faith. And so I, I, I felt that I was forced to resign. Mm -hmm. And so it was at that point, really, that the creative side of me came out and also the opportunity to start creating educational resources. So in a sense, what seemed like a, a nightmare actually mm -hmm. became the catalyst for change. Excellent. and created that new opportunity and so what I try to do is inspire women to say could be the tipping point in your life mm -hmm. when something what appears to be a total disaster occurs it could actually be the change that you need and use it as fuel to mm -hmm. actually take you to the next level Excellent. Thank you. That is so empowering, so motivational as well. So thank you, Vivian. Thank you for, um, so much for speaking about your excellent progress, speaking about your very encouraging and positive affirmation theme titles, because female leadership is so important and especially looking to the next generation while making a difference. And so it's so inspiring to hear how you're paving the way. So thank you so much for joining us today, Vivian, your work in education, your journey as a black female founder, and indeed the positive impact you're making in the lives of educators, students, parents, and children is truly inspiring i know our listeners have gained so much from this um, conversation and for everyone listening be sure to check out vivian's book which is patina welcomes baby joshua rather launching on the 29th of october at the sanwell library if you're interested in learn with lalonio follow at learn with lalonio on on instagram on tiktok on facebook and do head and do look out for, for the new website which will be launching very soon so thank you everyone and vivian is there any one final thought that you'd like to leave with the audience encouragement today would be to anyone mm -hmm. and particularly female founders to be inspired and encouraged to pursue your dreams and aspirations mm -hmm. do not let anyone define you as the my book title said and there's a book title that says i will write my own full stop you are writing your own narrative. You are writing your own story. And only you can decide when you're going to put that full stop in because that journey has come to an end. Um, so be inspired, be encouraged and go and fulfill that dream. Excellent. Thank you so much, Vivian. And thank you to all of my listeners once again for coming back to listen to an episode on the Faith Brunel's Insights podcast. I'm Faith Brunel and today we had Vivian Viola Pommel with us. Remember, it's not an event, it's a journey. Your journey can begin now. Bye now and thank you for having me, Faith. Thank you so much, everyone. And, and, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Thank you for tuning in to the Faith Brunel's Insights podcast. It's been great. Bye, everyone. Bye now.